This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Uh, hello and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. Uh, I'm your host, Charlie the Professor Esser, as my son in the background asks me what epilepsy is. It is a neurological disorder that actually Daddy technically suffers from, uh, in which you have a repeated Seizure. series of neurons firing in your brain that causes you to pass out and shake violently. And with me, as always, is that beautiful blue-eyed boy. Ooh, Phil. Phil me and Parrish. It's okay. I don't have seizures anymore. I only had two seizures once about over 20 years ago. But when you have two seizures, you are technically considered epileptic. I took uh, carabamazepine for a few years, and then they eventually took me off of it because I was seizure-free for a very long time. I, I think that's why some video, you remember the horror, they yes. say, warning, they, this has flashing lights. Yes, because they can give you uh, seizures. I actually get auras mostly from sounds, and I still get auras from time to time, mm. which makes you feel like you're about to have a seizure, but I've never actually had a seizure. But I will occasionally... Get that feeling like a seizure is about to happen. Just Mary Hart's voice, voice. Yes. No. 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 I mean, <laughs> no. Usually, just a high pitched sound, which is mm. funny because I have because I suffer from tinnitus as well, and so I've actually all my life heard random high pitched noises in my ears. Those don't give me seizures, but or they don't give me an aura. But when there's like a kind of noise, it will trigger something. Oh, sorry, seizure warning um, for quality. Bing. Yes, yeah, for quality being. Well, that doesn't. The dulcet tones of Maz Menzor could never, never give never. me a feature. At least hopefully they won't while I'm driving, because that would kill us both. Uh, All right, so. A cross country road trip! So, what would you like to chat about, Charlie Esser? Oh, oh, well, you know, oh, you know, I'll say this much. Um, you know, we discussed. Um, I had theorized that when they, when they were bringing Hickman back, they were going to be bringing him back for Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah, no. No, but they are bringing him back for a former Fox property, the X-Men. Yep. So it really looks like they are investing in Hickman to give us that expanded X-Men universe that Disney can then make into X-Men movie. I think they're putting all the pieces back on the table because if you look at that picture, like Xavier's, like old, like original Xavier's there and... A lot of them are in their classic uniforms and stuff, so I'm just wondering if they're like setting a lot of stuff back to stat, you know, old status quo. Well, yeah, I mean, you got it, you got it, and and apparently that's what the whole when two aggressive species are in the same place, one of them's gonna kick the others, but was about. That's what the whole Hickman the little word was because it was in the same pun. Oh, that's what they're doing. I figured out now. They finally have. Okay, here's that, and here's who's making. It's Hickman and some other guys. So, yay! X Men reboot. Oh yeah. And, oh, speaking of X Men, did you see? I guess that uh, there was announced that Marvel was uh, reevaluating all the X Men movies that are like in production, like New Mutants yeah. and Gambit and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gambit. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I knew New Mutants wasn't ever going to see the light of day. I mean, it might. You know what? It might get a DVD release or something, but it's. And if they do decide, you know, let's put it in a theater or two, it's not gonna, it's not continuity. Uh, I honestly, I'll be surprised. I mean, I think they are done with Dark Phoenix. Oh yeah, it comes out in June. Yeah, yeah, they're done. Yeah, yeah. So I think Dark Phoenix is good, but I think that's the last hurrah. Yeah, it's it's it, it, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the end of the of the Fox the Foxman universe, and uh, we're going to be doing a new. New Marvel take on the mutants and their ilk, um, which will be, which will be interesting, you know, to say the least. Uh, yeah, I'd say except for Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool, everyone else is probably getting recast. Oh yeah, well, Ryan Reynolds, but they have they've said no. Ryan Reynolds is safe, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it makes sense because he's a fourth wall breaker. He can he can step right into the new universe. Plus, that's the most popular thing over there. Well, yeah, that too, you know. I mean, who knows? Maybe Dark Phoenix will make a trillion dollars, and they'll say, okay, maybe we can work with this universe. But if Dark Phoenix doesn't make, you know, a billion dollars... 
a fox a fo- a fox X Men movies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Charlie. So basically, they got one shot, just like uh, just like Eminem had in Eight Mile. One <laughs> shot takes a chance to glow. The opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo, there's my rap. If you have a problem, he'll solve it. <laughs> I don't think that was Eminem. <laughs> yeah, same difference. But uh, oh. it's at Charlie Esser. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? I, what I'll say is, uh, who knows? Maybe Dark Phoenix will be great. Um, and you know, from it, they can they can sort of they can do a soft reboot like DC is doing. You know, mm-hmm. if it really, if it really show, it's it's like this. You know, I I think had Wonder Woman not been a hit, I think that DC might have just completely walked away from that entire Justice League universe, which they're now sort of doing it, <laughs> but they're sort of half. Like I said, they're they're soft rebooting. It. Yeah, they're doing what they do in the comics, which is like, oh yeah, I guess we did meet once before, didn't we? And that, well, it just usually it's not that soon afterwards. <laughs> yeah, where it's like. Well, you forgot we were both on Secret Wars World together. Yeah, we all forgot Deadpool was there too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't, you know, I mean, I, I've never had that much faith in the Fox Men universe. Although it's funny because you know the Fox, you know, the Fox X Men that was like the first big, big breakout into it, you know, and just never went anywhere, you know? I think maybe had they tried to integrate the Fantastic Four into their X-Men universe a little bit better, had they had a more of a cons- had they had more of a coordinated effort, I think maybe Fox might have done better with their properties they had, you know? Well, I, don't, think the- I yeah. don't think they gave, I don't think like they didn't have like a like a giant plan going forward in the beginning because if you can, like the later movies, you could tell like they didn't think things through like what characters they used where and like timeline gets all messy and yeah, and 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 I'm sure you can always say, well, that's just the X Men, um, but oh. then you have to introduce the time travel, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so we'll see it. You know, we get we get one last run of Quicksilver, and uh, who knows? Maybe they'll even integrate the Scarlet Witch eventually. Ooh, she's in that universe, you know. That could be their. That could be be their big uh, go between between Avengers and uh, X Men yeah. is Scarlet Witch. Anything back, is possible. To bring back yeah. Silver. Ah, uh, didn't see that coming. Um, is he scheduled to be in Endgame? Who Quicksilver? Yeah, the actor. I haven't heard anything, but unless they do some kind of time travel shenanigans or something, who knows? They might. Well, they're doing something. So they can know. they can bring him back. So you know they can they can bring anyone back, man. Well, I mean, now that the like that. Well, the Fox deal is done, I mean, they can use them again. So yeah. Well, you know what? We'll have to see if we actually get into the Soul Stone. Yeah. Or we'll is, that an, what... is that an end credit scene? We get Quicksilver back, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, it will be... Int- oh, and then you can introduce uh, the Inhumans, too. Because mm-hmm. he marries Crystal, and they have a little baby, uh, who was neither mutant nor inhuman for like a week. Um, and Lockjaw says there are, there are fates worse than... Uh, being than merely being human, but like we were talking on Super Can our Super Canic, the uh, Capes and Lunatics. I mean, it seems like they're doing Eternals. So are they gonna are they doing Eternals before Inhumans? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're really gonna talk about Inhumans. I think if they do an Inhuman reboot, it'll be part of the Fantastic Four universe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, and do it as a movie. And, don't 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 send it to TV well, again. We, we did we learn that lesson? I don't think that it was that it was on TV was the problem. <laughs> you know, buck, that's the thing. It's like don't, don't buck it up, people. <laughs> yeah, it was it was just poorly written, and it wasn't it wasn't a good story, man. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: I can sit through a lot of bad Marvel movies, and I still have not watched all of the Inhumans. Mm-hmm. You know, I still have not. It is that's where that is. is I have not actually, and it's like for me to not watch it. And for an MCU film. This is a man who could sit through Powerless and he can't switch, sit through the Inhumans people. Well, Powerless is good, Philip. I'm sorry. I know a lot of comic book nerds over in the DC world don't like it, but it is it is great. And it's it's No Consequences Day was a really good episode. So let's just say you, you can watch and enjoy controversial shows, but you can't get yeah. through Inhumans. I can't get through. It's just not good. It just... Hey, no, nobody's arguing with you there. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, you know, uh, I and I really don't think I've ever actually seen a defender of Inhumans. I know? don't think so it's, either. You know, it's like because I'm trying to think, you know, because there were there were all there have been defenders of Power Us. I was not a lone voice crying out in the wilderness. <laughs> I have read people said, "Hey, Power Us is actually kind of fun," you know. Um, mm -hmm. <sighs> you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, DC can go snap Zod's neck and no one cares. <laughs> Why'd you say that name? <laughs> uh, anyway, one, uh, but yeah, so that's that. That's cool. Um, I am, you know, there, there's there's not a lot to talk about. There's just Shazam coming soon, mm -hmm. and then the End Game, and then the return of Agents of Shield, The Last Supper. Oh yeah, we got, um, pic we got that picture. Yeah, yeah. Got to ask who's in the Judas position. Hmm. I'm trying to remember who was in the Judas business. I actually think it was Phil. Oh yeah, because he was like sitting behind them, wasn't he? Like kind of like yeah, off in the yeah. back. Yeah. I think so. So, a mm, lot could be going on there. Um, we'll have to wait until uh, until they uh, until they all come back. So we're waiting. We're excited. We're all we're all desperately finding out what happened after Graviton. Mm, yeah. Uh, because. That was that was it, man. Graviton. They saved the world, only for the Avengers to screw it up. You know, man, that's a great alternate. See that? See if they do time travel, I want them to do that. I want them to go find Graviton, <laughs> fix him, and then Graviton defeats Thanos. Graviton goes for the head. <laughs> there we go. You know. Because there was no no mention that about Thanos in that whole future scape. No. Half the universe disappeared. No one even mentions it. Graviton crushed him. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, well, no. Graviton destroyed him because Graviton blew up the world, man. Yeah. Can't, you know, he, he's about to go rewind the, the thing and get the final Infinity Stone and say, wait a minute. Boom! Ah. <laughs> nope! Gets eaten by hot lava. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, if there's nothing else to talk about, we got plenty of comics we can talk we got about. Lots of comic books this week. I mean, I, um, yeah, because we're kind of in the we're kind of in the lull. There was no Orville, no Gotham this week. Nope. Token Dagger is not back yet. We know that. Apparently, we I did see the trailer for it. Uh, that looks neat. You know, um, we've got uh, uh what's what's it uh. Uh, we got, is it Mayhem is the character's name? Yeah, I believe so, yes. She's going around killing people. Mm-hmm. And she's got, like, she's got both cloak and dagger powers, apparently, so. It'll be neat. Uh, let's talk Superior Spider-Man. Let's start with, uh, let's start with one of the best ones, man. Oh, yeah. Superior Kielbasa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we open it up, and we've got, uh, good old, good old, uh, Dr. Tolliver. Uh, <laughs> lifting things and uh, you know, with his arm all bandaged up and cleaning trying up to save up. people's lives, cleaning up after the Terax rampage. Yeah, and you know, doing his best to be a, a, a hero, but failing, you know, in his own in his own head. And then we cut back to the, and I love this scene, man. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I gotta say, uh, <laughs> that that lady coming on to Tolliver. And Maria in that room, you think she's like, mm. Jealous? Yeah, I think that's going to be a thing. That, you know, Otto's going to be moving on, and Maria's going to be like, mm, you oh, you were with, you with that doctor? And, you know? <laughs> or, or is this formulaic romantic tension for when Otto and uh, Mar uh, Anna Maria get back together? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's entirely possible. Uh, Waxman. That was interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, why did no one tell me he's a serial killer? We're super villains. We don't do background checks. <laughs> yeah. But I did like Digger. I love Digger. Digger is definitely my favorite member of the Grave Shift. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, even the maggots are, are moving back in. Uh, <laughs> That's right, Mortuary, mate. <laughs> yep. Oh, he's just so awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, and. Gosh, what a what a really awful kind of person. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the big point was just like Anna Maria trying to teach uh, Otto like how to be a humble hero, not just like I'm superior to everyone. Yeah, and 
And he really gets it. And, you know, he has the conversation with the kid. And, you know, and you also get this idea that, you know what, the man has a backstory, you know, mm -hmm. where Maria says that was just perfect what you said to him. It said, you know, I lost my parents at a young age, too, you know, and actually not his mother at a young age. He was actually a full grown man when his mother died. He was just, <laughs> but he knows what it's like to lose a parent, even even if they're not the best parents, you know. Yeah, and his father—I think he lost his father at a younger age, even though his father yeah. was an abusive drunk. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it still hurts to lose these people. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you know, at first he's like, "Oh, well, we'll triage and we'll do this," and like you can't just say lives don't matter. It's like, well, yeah, I'm going to send the Sparta bots to everywhere else to find people, and they do. You know, and he does his best, and you know. And then him and uh, I've get another top, the other doctor are having the little chat, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'd love to go out with you, lady." Um, mm. And he makes the point that you know, I get it now. These people are they struggle, and they're doing it at best, and that's worth saving. You know, mm -hmm. I do think that you know the fact of the matter. I think Otto really was a nice guy before the terrible accident. And maybe it's the Parker DNA. Maybe it's being merged up with Peter Parker's brain. Maybe it's the fact that really he is Peter. These are actually Peter Parker's brain waves over top his own waves. And it was or, from a brain that just thought he was, uh, you know. Or that Otto's been killed and resurrected through several means many times. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just like whatever was once Otto Octavius, this is now Dr. Tolliver, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that, it's, this is a new person. And yes, he has all of Doc Ock's memories. He also has a lot of Peter Parker's memories. You know, he's got a lot of who and he's got a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. You know, um, much like they said about Vision, uh, you know, yeah, there's Ultron, there's me, there's Tony Stark, there's Jarvis. You know, there's a lot of Vision in there aside from just the Mind Stone. So mm -hmm. maybe even the best part. And then we get the return of a classic, classic West Coast villain. Master Pandemonium. Master Pandemonium. On the last oh, page. Then, yeah. Yeah. That's some um, delicate shading because there's a lot of delicacies there. Uh, and then it also... Little... And so I guess we're getting him and then it's a next issue, Doctor Strange also. I wonder if Doctor Strange is going to know that's Otto. Just yeah. because of his powers. Well, I mean, he'll... Yeah, probably. <laughs> or, or, or you his, 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 you know, maybe if it's not a problem, he's going to respect him. And then maybe we're going to get Otto saying, "Hmm, I do not know enough about magic." Mm, yeah, I'm to build some magic stuff. <laughs> or the realms is coming. Yeah, well, you know, you know, uh, that's what that's what Reed Richards did after after mm. Inferno is he said, "Oh, that's got to learn magic." <laughs> and he still never got the hang of it, but it's like he he can he can track magical energies. He can do these kind of things. Yeah, it's this energy. It's stuff I can deal with. Um, and Otto, if if, if 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 that dropout Doom can do it, true, you know. And speaking of that dropout Doom, yeah, <laughs> uh, always bad. War number eight. Uh, Fantastic War number eight. You know, um, I'm liking this story. I think they've redoomed Doom in a very nice way. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I do think that because he's still like, I am a hero. I, mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm not going to pretend to be a hero by your rules. I'm going to be a hero by my rules, which is just him being a villain. Yeah, and, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be Tony Stark. I'm Victor on Doom. I'm going to Doom. Yeah. but And again, this idea of I have trapped, you know, mm -hmm. Galactus. And there's uh, I, this. I think we talk about trapping the Fantastic Four. Oh, well, trapping the. He does that. This, that's not new. Oh, no, yeah, um, I was going to say, I got so many classic vibes off that. Yeah, the whole Reed Richards stretch to his breaking point, and Cole, just like in the in the first one, in the first movie. Mm. Uh, well, the second movie, if you count the Roger Corman version. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, one of these things where it's like, uh, I don't know if you really understand how his powers work. I don't know if Reed understands how his powers work. Um, there's a lot going on here. But, of course, it comes down to the fact that um, uh, Reed, as always, or Doom is just not thinking things through as well he should. We had a nice little break here. Um, with, and, by the way, I thought for a minute there that, that Sue was naked. But, no, that's just a flesh-colored jumpsuit. Which I yeah. don't know if she was wearing in the last episode. Well, I wonder if they he took their uniforms off him because he was worried there was, gonna be, there was like, 
something. Oh yeah, they are all okay. Yeah, they're all. Oh, they're wearing they're wearing their prison jumpsuits. I see. Yeah. But still, only gave. Well, I don't know. Is Ben naked or is he wearing just? That's what, that's what I was going to ask you. I can't. I mean, the way it's shadowed, you can't tell. But I mean, is Ben Grimm <laughs> naked? I can't. And it might not have had any in his size. I that's guess. what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 It looks like there are some kind of shorts there. So I think they they or they gave him prison shorts. Or um, we get a neat little nightmare scene with with uh, Franklin. Yep. With all the universes he has created and having to deal with, you know. Why did you create a world with suffering? You know, mm-hmm. and the griever there to sort of think, ah, look at all the death you've caused, blah blah blah. And then he wakes up with his blue hair, um, and then he walks out on Alicia because she can't follow him because she's blind. Which you know, teenagers, teenagers, teenagers. yeah. Um, but then you know, Reed makes the point that you know. Uh, and Doom's like, we will, that Latveria will lead the world, and you will all obey, you you will not mess with me because I will supply all this greatness, and I will conquer the universe, yada, yada, yada. Classic Doom. Are we, are we, um, we even got a, uh, we got Wendy from a, uh, classic Burn, uh, issue. Oh, yeah, yes, and her little goblin friends. Mm-hmm. Which, that's gonna come back. I don't know how, but yes. Um... <clears throat> but Reed points out that there are these power surges coming, and you're seeing these at regular intervals, and you know you've got to, got to, got to deal with that. Um, and of course, Doom's like, "Ha, no! How dare you insult my math?" It's like, Doom, your math is always wrong. You know, it's like, can you tell me one time that Reed has said, "You know, your math isn't right. You forgot to carry the two." Uh, <laughs> Look in a mirror and tell me your math is right. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, to be fair, his face got dead pulled by a bunch of super villains. Yeah. Uh, this time. This time, yeah. And, uh, and, you know, you'd think that Doom would have some kind of anti invisible technology in his armor. You think but they decide to basically pants Doom on <laughs> international TV. Stu does, yeah. Yeah, that is like craziness of it. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't just make that helmet invisible. She makes the whole armor invisible. Yeah, just like... Wah, wah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's... that's that, that. It was an odd choice. Um, you know, I don't really like this as an artistic choice where they like have the lip... Like have a skin tag that connects it. Oh, yeah, it's, not yeah. like, it's not like his mouth is larger. It's just like, oh, there's a melty bit here. That's, mm-hmm. I don't think that's how I don't think that's how scars work. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. That's like a comical anyway. trope of like hideously deformed. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I prefer and not for nothing. The the man can't like fix his own dang face. He's got like, oh I'm the world's greatest genius, but I can't I can't just do basic plastic surgery. <laughs> Or an image inducer, or something. Well, I mean, I guess at this moment. With but the, I get, I get it. Yeah, he can, build, he can build a time machine, but he can't do plastic surgery. I get, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's all crazy. Um, but yeah, he's not. He's yeah. So I yeah, I don't know about the pantsing do my national TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I like the story overall, and I like the fact that it's like Doom being Doom. <laughs> it's a very classic. It's a very old school Fantastic Four. It's definitely a return to basics. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you think, Philip? I liked it. I liked it, but yeah, like again, that last page when they pants to him, just like, uh, uh. well, you know, I, you know what? They're trying to get him angry. Oh well, I think he got them angry. <laughs> well, you know, but when he when Doom is angry, he makes mistakes. Yes, of course, Doom always makes mistakes. So, what are you gonna do? Um, No Road Home was pretty good. Yes, I really Road liked Kevin. the No Road Home. I mean, for a weekly book, this has been really solid. Yes. And now, is this gonna just like go right into uh, Savage Adventures? Do we know? I don't know, but I would assume with the whole Conan thing, I would assume it's. Yeah, I mean it's it's a pretty pretty good story. Um, I love Captain Marvel. In it. I'm sorry, um, Photon. Photon. Captain Marvel. Um, <laughs> she'll always be my Captain Marvel. 
Hey, you I mean, know, we've had more than one Captain America. Why can't we have more than one Captain Marvel? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm hoping that, you know, when, uh, when, uh, when the movie comes out, when Captain Marvel 2 Electric Boogaloo comes out, or maybe even in Endgame, where, if we get to meet uh, grown-up Monica. Uh, she's going by the name Captain Marvel. I hope so. That would be awesome. Uh, and whole and here's the thing. this is the the whole Hulk and um, going to Euphoria, you know that's a plan, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's not just running out. There's a plan, yes. Yeah, Hulk ain't just abandoning everybody. And does Hulk now have like nightmare powers still? I would assume probably for like till like the end of this arc, probably. Yeah, because he has one of the shards. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it. Uh, Conan, Conan axes, axes vision. Conan is just like, what the heck? It's a what are we dealing with? Here? <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on, come on, people. I, I, you know, is there any? This is, I fight giant monsters. This is not what I normally do. Now this is my real. Oh, hmm. I think I got to Harkness's house. Oh, I just realized what house because I'm looking at. Like, is that the house of mystery? Are we doing a DC crossover? Are we going to a Malcolm? I don't know. <laughs> but no, I just realized that's probably Agatha Harkness's house. And um, I think Nix is out of her league if she's going to go cross ones with Agatha Harkness. Well, yeah. she's dead, but... <laughs> I'm sure her ghost or something could be there. Uh, or Salem 7. Her kids, you know. Ooh, something. Yeah, there's going to be something there when she goes there. It ain't going to be the cakewalk she thinks it is. And then we get our big, um, you know, the, the, when was Oxius, Oxalus, the snake, the snake salamander god character sends Billet, our newly, newly minted character Billet, to kill Conan because, oh, his great love he lost, who we just met. Um, <laughs> like I said, they're, they're trying to do the Sonya story. They don't have Sonya, and they said, well, we're going to recreate the Sonya story. We're going to make it, and we're going to make it better. Um, I think they already have. I did read the lit. I think it's a better story. Um, you know, I think that the original Sonya, they got a little too, you know, rapey in it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, it got a little, it got a little, it's a little, it's a little Alan Mori for my taste, the original Sonya story. You look oh. back on it. You know, it's like, wow, does it really have to always be sex? Although, never done that. That's a real quality in that world. It's just, you know, I don't think that should be the risen dietro of the character. Yeah. Just my thought, just my opinion. And now let's get to Marvel Comics Presents. Yes. Number three. Yeah. Number, number three. Yeah, number three. Um, worst place on earth. Room Lake. Yep. Yep. Uh, that Wolverine story continues, and uh, yeah, and uh, an alternate origin for X twenty three. I'm not sure here. <laughs> so I guess we're going to be introducing yet another Wolverine baby. <laughs> Wolverine babies, they make our dreams come true. <laughs> Wolverine babies, they'll do the same for you. And uh, it just that it's another witch named Agatha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So apparently, all old witches are named Agatha for some reason. Just because, yes. Just because. But this was the story that really, really got me. Um, but the cap one. The cap one, man, because it is just such a painful and powerful story about the limitations of superheroes. You mm-hmm. know, and. And I like that it's a, you know, it's neat that it's a 60s book, which means that, and this is the, because at first I thought, oh man, are they going to be doing like, um, you know, 50s cap in this? But no, it was, it was the proper 60s cap. Hmm. Um, I would like to see more of Williams Burnside, man. I, 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 I like that little damaged hero concept, but, um, but, but yes. Yeah. But yeah, just um, basically cap during the civil rights movement. and Yeah. And just the difficulties of people's lives and the powerlessness he has in it. And this is this is your classic, you know, white guy trying to help help people, you know, mm-hmm. that you may have certain powers that protect you, 
but unless you're willing to be there every day forever, yeah, you know, people that the people that have to survive this are in a spot where you can't help them. Now, arguably, and I guess maybe they did really, maybe he had, you know, where he got outspoken, you know, <laughs> Jeff was pretty outspoken in the sixties, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, maybe not so much in the well, maybe a little bit in the sixties. Yeah, you know, Stan Lee certainly was the kind of guy to to go there, and um, and in, you know, um, yeah, but this is. It, uh, it's also beautifully drawn, um, and just you know, and again, you know, you have this thing with the artist giving so much life to the characters' faces, and when the woman obviously fails the test, her her test to um, be able to vote, and uh, <laughs> no, this took place when there was a lot of oppression of African Americans and African Americans were prevented from voting. Um, and, you know, basically it's all Cap's fault that all this stuff, which isn't necessarily true because, you know, yeah, it's like, this is just the world, but it's also, you know, we can't fight, we, you know, we're not super powered and it's Rush. And uh, it'll crush your Hogan. Ah, the last story, yes, Spider Man. And they're keeping with their thing that they did in the last issue, where like it's a throwback to the '60s, but also set in the modern era. Mm-hmm. So we have two that were set in the '60s and one in the modern era, and um, we found out that apparently Crusher Hogan's been holding a lot of a grudge and is finally getting his chance to beat up on Spider Man, and. We found out that there's a spell that's been cast on Crusher Hogan to try and, uh, you know, kill Spider Man to get his heart. And who wants the heart of a spider? Doctor Druid. Doctor Druid. Uh, they're really eviling him up. He's got the he's got the hair's gone all spiky now. <laughs> they young them up. They young them up for a while, but yeah, now he's back to like creepy old. Uh... Man appears. Well, yeah. Well, it's not even just creepy. It's like it's actually that the hair is sticking straight up. It's not just because, like back in the back in the back when he was in the Avengers, when he wasn't really an evil guy yet, but just sort of a jerk guy. Yeah, he's he just that. you know he just had like Robert Ricardo hair. You know, yes. <laughs> now they've taken him and gone full on seventies uh, Wolverine. Jerk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they've totally villained him up, and then. And then Doctor Doctor Rudu puts him in sort of a little something, um, puts him somewhere. So I don't know if, is that the last we've seen of Doctor Druid, or will he be back? It's never the yeah. last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it won't be the last. And then next week, hey, one of your favorite characters, Moon Knight. Moon Knight, yep. And it's the three piece suit, Moon Knight. Yes, Mister Knight. Yes. Yes. So we're definitely. So that's obviously going to be the modern story because he didn't have that in the eighties. Yeah. Because oh no, actually next week is the seventies. So. So I wonder what Moon Knight's going to be referencing in the seventies. I don't know. Will, we'll be get... Moon... will it be Moon Knight or will it be a seventies Spider-Man story? Well, no, it'll be a seventies Spider-Man story. Okay. But Moon Knight will have something referencing oh, the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe he's going to fight Disco Hustler again. I don't know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, you know, I mean, I do like the Marvel Comics Presents. It's a good book. Um, mm-hmm. I may actually have to put it on the poll, you know? Mm-hmm. It's been good to me. Yeah, I didn't get to read Squirrel Girl yet, so that'll be for next week. <laughs> oh. Uh, you didn't read Invaders, did you? Oh, I did read Invaders, yes. Mm. That was actually very good. I just don't have it here with me. Uh. <laughs> I mean, it looks, looks like we're going to get the whole... Uh... Reveal of what you know, what Xavier did next week. Yeah, for next well, that's, that, that's that's exciting because well, you know, and they referenced the whole that you had mentioned the whole uh, the, the burn oxygen uh, imbalance. Yeah, we thought he had fixed that, but he's you know, but obviously there, there's something more with with uh, Namor. Um, maybe he isn't a naturally born human Atlantean hybrid. <laughs> Or Xavier. Who knows? Me- Xavier is messing with his head. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it'll be that his father was actually a mutant. Mm. Yeah. So it's not that he's the first mutant Atlantean. It's that he actually his father was a mutant. You know. 
anything is possible. We'll see how it goes. Um, and Namor didn't kill them. And obviously, there are people that want him to kill these people because they know something. They know Namor's dark secret. Bum, bum, bum. He is actually Tony Stark's real father. Bum, bum, bum. Or what if, oh, what if, what if, what if Namor is all mutant? What if he isn't, what if he's really not Atlantean or something? Well. He's not blue. His mama, his, his, I think his mom would know if, uh, <laughs> he had a mom, so. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but it's. <laughs> you know, the mom usually knows. It's, it's, yeah, I'm she was just, blue. Uh, she was blue, I thought she was Atlantean, but she was a mutant. <laughs> She was actually Cree the whole time. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, I hope we get the Atlanteans somewhere in the game. Uh, <laughs> I want more Atlanteans. I think I speak for everybody on that one. Oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it was it's neat. It, they do the old USO routine, I, and I love that. This is just, just she, when, and also what's neat about that is obviously they have had to steal stuff from the army a lot. Oh, yeah. During the 40s, that they had to utilize this, because really, this isn't going to work on German soldiers. This only works if you're actually going in to get intelligence from the Allies. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, um, although, to be fair, if you actually look at the 40s comic books, they actually did a lot of work against Fifth Column people in the U.S. So there probably were a lot of uh, dupes within the U- U.S. government. That they were having to do battle with. So, good old Del Rusk in his first appearance, as I recall, was the industrialist in the old 1940s who eventually became Red Skull. Guy's so first issue. I haven't decided what we're doing for dinner yet, buddy. Um, <laughs> it's not even 10 a.m. Have you seen my family, so we, we have hollow legs. I was going to say, think about lunch yeah. before dinner. Yeah. Well, they like to know, because, you know, during the weekend, that's when we usually like to take out. So. Ah, nice. So that's when dinner's exciting. Oh, hey, did you read the um, Amazing Spider-Man 18? No, no, like, I, I'm behind on my Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, it's it was interesting, because, um, yeah, Spider-Man and, like, all those villains, Craven and them hunted down or trapped, like... That's, I think it's, yeah, Central Park under this, like, force field. And those Craven robots that are, like, hunting them... Uh-huh. Ah, uh, they're remote controlled by the rich people. Uh remember, ah. Yeah, yeah, because you see like some of the robots be like, Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm not so puny anymore or, or, or you know, taking yeah. out their aggressions on uh the villains and stuff. Oh boy. Yeah. Cause you know Wait, our, this is taking place in Central Park? Yeah, like I said, they throw a force field over it. Why? That's like crazy. can't Craven get like a Go to Monster Island or something? I mean... That's going to that's gonna cut into his profit margin. Come on. But, you know, here you're going to say, unless you got the proper permits, Doming Central Park is not something you just get to Oh, do. yeah, I'm sure he went for the proper permits, Charlie. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because now it's like, well, now I guess all the superheroes in Manhattan... In Manhattan. Well, yeah, I think they may. I think they'll they, have to come in and say, "Oh, someone dumped Central Park again." Well, no, they even have like Captain Marvel get on TV and she's saying, "Yeah, they're on it, but they can't get through that field because it's that same force field from Civil War yeah. too." No, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. But, but still, yeah. first off, I don't think Quasar is dead. She got through it the last time. <laughs> yeah, but they. Yeah, but they haven't. Sh- they haven't shown where she's at. So. Oh, okay. I don't yeah, know if they know where the quantum bands are at. So. Mm. Oh no, 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 Guardians of the Galaxy, uh looks uh, like uh, uh Wendell Vaughn had him, but yeah, he got sucked through a black hole and they said or they're gonna explain where he went in uh June's Guardians of the Galaxy oh, yeah, annual. That's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pieces uh, of- it is what it is, yeah. Oh but I I like I, I like I like female uh uh Quasar. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh well. But the big cliffhanger Mary Jane being stalked by that mysterious figure who they still haven't said who that is. Oh, remember the it, yeah, and the bandages. Is that and stuff. They haven't said who it is. It's you know he seems. Wasn't to know. The hobgoblin actually like, turned into a hobgoblin during Inferno? Inferno. Oh yeah, he got. Did he ever? With, he got bonded. Did he ever get degoblinized? Yeah, they. Yeah, they. Yeah, Mac and Dale when the demon got ripped apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So. So. Maybe it's the demon. From- <laughs> maybe I don't know, but this guy seems pretty familiar with Peter. Cause, you know. Yeah. 
Oh, it's another clone. Oh, it's Gwen Stacy clone. <laughs> and she's all decayed in there, you know. And she's all a little bit crazy now. It's like, oh, you think you can take my Peter, do you? Oh, there's a my Peter. There's a lot of dead bodies on Spider Man's tab. That could be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. No, but I think that then it would explain why they're stalking Mary Jane. Yeah. And that's what was that one guy who kidnapped her that one time. No, oh, that what Jonathan Caesar or whatever. Yeah. Jeez. Some rando rich dude, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, I got a recommendation for you. Did you read Doctor Strange 12? Probably not. Yeah, I flipped through to the comic store and I was like, eh, I don't know. That It, it kind of just struck me as kind of, um, I don't know, I did, I did, nothing caught my eye in it. What was, what, was, what was exciting? What did I miss? Well, basically, I mean, this alien comes to Doctor Strange and tells him he needs his help with Galactus. And then Doctor Strange is like, well, we have to... You know, do this, 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 and the alien's like, no, 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 no. My my plan's about to die. So like, he basically ra- raids Doctor Strange's magical armory, and like, he banishes Gal- this alien banishes Galactus to like a magical realm. And Doctor Strange is like, you can't do that. He's like, Galactus is like a creature of like you know the physical world of science. He's like, mm-hmm. if he starts feeding in this magical realm, it's gonna have bad consequences. Yeah. I can imagine. Okay. So then Strange, uh, that, and the alien don't care. So Strange, like, uh, you know, get, you get, it, get, you. get a scene, get it, get into all his, you know, whatever magical weaponry and whatever he has left. And, uh, he plunges into that magical realm a little too late because it looks like Galactus is starting to feed. Oh, boy. Yeah. Huh? Gotta eat something, man. So I wonder, didn't they didn't they tease like Doctor Strange was going to be the herald of Galactus? I wonder if this is going to be st- Strange to be like, no, 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 you can't eat here. I'll show you other places to eat. Yes. Well, you know. Well, actually, of course, we don't know what that's going to do. Honestly, it might make him better. You know, like <laughs> you don't want to eat that magic, Galactus. Like, why not? Maybe I'll get to be Golden Galactus again. <laughs> Which, not for nothing, isn't Galactus currently buried in a mountain? And I, I. Galactus is too big of a character to have in two separate books at the same time. Timelines. Yeah, it's gonna. I, I'm surprised there's not like an editor's note. This takes place before or after Fantastic yeah. Four. Yeah, Marvel needs to get back. Editors, you need to get back on your game. I need asterisks and little boxes. That's right. You you know, to, let's get to it. You need a continuity expert over there. Get Charlie Esmer on the phone. Get Charlie Esmer on the phone. They should, but you know. I will commute to Marvel. I will commute to New York City for it. I, I promise. I, promise. I won't even complain about. it. I'll even take the second train. Ooh. I'm sure it's nowhere near the path. Yeah, I'll just go to World Train and I'll go up from there. You know, rather than switching at General Square and going up and then taking another train. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, anyway. So yeah. So uh, no, I didn't read it, but you know, sounds. I mean, like I said, it sounds like this is a good setup. I probably will read the next one then. Yeah. But, you know, this one just sounds like, here's how we got into trouble with Galactus. Now let's try and sort through the problems with Galactus. Like, you know, like, for example, the Gwenpool issue of Spider-Man Deadpool, that got me to buy it, you know. But the previous one was like, eh, I don't know. You know. I hear you. Not 100% sure. I'm, I I care how they got into trouble. I want to know how they get out of it. That's when it gets interesting. Okay. Uh, anything else going on, Philip? Uh, I don't have anything. Yeah, I don't have much either, you know. It's a slow week, you know. Movies aren't out yet. I say next um, week next week we'll have Shazam. Week. Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. Oh boy. Shazam. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Made a reference to Shazam and Powerless today. <laughs> Why don't I just get a wizard to help me? Shazam! Oh, didn't work. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I am. I am gonna be. I'm gonna be fascinated by how that storyline plays out. Yeah, I mean, um, I, hear, I hear it's supposedly a fun movie. So, well, I hear it's a fun movie. You know, um, they said Aquaman was a fun movie too, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it was pretty fun, except for oh, Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that, exactly it. I, said, I don't need another film where it's like, oh, it's great, except for the title character. <laughs> <laughs> you just focus on everybody else. It's a really great film. That title character, kind of a jerk. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking Shazam, the main character, should be a little more likable than Aquaman. Yeah, I just hope they didn't steal all that stuff from that store. Yeah. I think my biggest thing is they're walking out with all the, oh, hey, we just stopped the thief, so you got to let us steal from you. 
That's not how that works. It's not how any of this works. No, exactly. It's like, and when did these little kids get the money? And are they buying beer with it? I mean, you know. Yeah, ho- hopefully not. Yeah, it's, it, it just strikes me as like, if they had money to go buy snacks, wouldn't they have just bought snacks? If they, may, I don't know, maybe like someone wants to pay him for saving their life. In an earlier scene. And yeah, maybe it's a reward, yeah. Yeah, they got a hundred bucks. Ooh, let's go buy candy. Woo! So maybe that's good. But if they just steal a bunch of stuff, it's like, this is just, that's just Aquaman all over again, you know? Mm-hmm. Your mercy is in the ocean. It's like, dude, not cool. This is some hardworking pirates trying to make their life, you know? And then you, then you couch it all in the, in the specter of racism. Like, well, you know, we turn to piracy because... You know, our family has turned to piracy because of racism. They were just a family of pirates. You know, now it's a family business, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's, it was not. I mean, there were a lot of things that were good and that were very enjoyable about it, but that was not one of them. Um, uh, well, anyways, uh, but we'll talk about that. We'll know for sure if, if, if Shazam is a Wonder Woman or an Aquaman, or is it its own thing? You know? Or is it... Why did you say that name? <laughs> Why did you say that? Oh, it would be funny if they do reference that at some point. If just he goes, Why did you say that name? <laughs> it be just, it's just like, because it's your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if they do reference the idea that um, Dr. Sylvania got his powers from Shazam, Oh, Shazam. Like, Why did you say that name? I know that name. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Why can't you say that name? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. I hope they call him Captain Marvel. Did they ever call him Captain Marvel in the books? Or? Not anymore, but I, I, who knows if they'll make a shout out to that. You know. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, did they, did they, did they want to point out, hey, there's another movie two theaters over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean. You know, you actually can't copyright a name, I guess. It's like a weird thing. That's why there's been like dozens of other Captain Marvels over the years. But so, it's just consi- Yeah. So I could come so I could create a character and call it Spider Man? I guess so. That's what I've heard. I mean I have heard that like there's this weird thing where like so it, it's only if, if the character is different enough, you can they can have names, you know. Hmm. But obviously no one wants to just use a name that's clearly someone else's name. So, you know. Now, and I was going to say, do you really want to use a name where, like, the name of your competitor is in the, <laughs> this character's yeah. name? Well, exactly, yeah. I, mean, I think that's as much of a, of a, of a concern for DC as, as, as just having Captain Marvel, you know. It's like, it's like Captain Marvel was Captain Marvel. It was Kree. Yes. Oh, and of course, they already had Marvel Boy. Uh-huh. Who was Uranian. Had a couple of those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know the original one, the one that's in the yes. of Atlas. He is, he is, he is from Uranus. Uh, <laughs> Robert Grayson. Yeah. Yes, he is awesome. He is cool. I love the Agents of Atlas. I hope we get more of that. I only, I, I, I hope they don't really short sell Wu because mm. they put him in Ant Man as FBI agent Jimmy Wu. Yes, and it's, I love that actor. He's a great, he's a great comic actor, but he should, he should also be a bit of. Of a BA there too, you know. That's all I'm saying. That's I mean, he's, all I'm saying. he's in the universe. They could do something with him now. Yeah, and I was waiting for him to just go meet Gorilla Man afterwards, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be awesome if you know, like, if, if they do have a scene there. It's like, don't worry, I know a guy in Gorilla Man and Venus. <laughs> oh boy! And then if they ever do bring Loki back in Venus and Loki, I'm like, oh yeah, I know you. Loki's first appearance, man. Nice. He predates Thor. I gotta find that issue. Uh, anyway, okay. Uh, Philip, this has been a, l- a lovely episode. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to write to you, talk about it, talk about uh, the first appearance of Loki in Venus in the 1950s, how can they find you? I uh, can always email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com, and on Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And if you want to leave a voicemail for any of our shows, you can always call 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. 
And if you'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way the way our Miles and Paws once did, you can do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Orville, Gotham, and coming soon, Cloak and Dagger, Season 2, Electric Boogaloo. At Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. For quality. Ding. Ah, see? Ah, I didn't know you were going to push it, because usually you're, like, looking for the button. And that's my cue to know you're looking for the button. I thought you weren't even looking for the button that time. No, I, I thought you were, just, you, you were just... You were reading your comic book. No, I wasn't. I was looking at my... I was looking at the button. You were trying to distract me. Make me look like a fool. <laughs> you were pantsing me at, like, so much Dr. Doom. Whoa. <laughs> wah, wah. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Uh... Don't pants Doom, people. He does not like it. He wouldn't like him when he's pants. <laughs> the monarch has no pants. Yeah, the emperor has no clothes, clearly. Okay. This has been fun, Philip. But how's his, bone, how's his bone structure? Yes. <laughs>